All right, so previously we finished off with the series configuration for the waterfall chart. In this video, we're going to be going through the value labels for those particular series. Now, as always, within the sample report, you already have a pre-configured variation of the chart, so you can just play around with it and see how things have been set up. But in our case, we're going to be going into the training view and actually building the chart and going through the settings ourselves. So first things first, we're going to add an instance of the waterfall visual, resize it and disable the background and the title. As for the fields, I'm going to be using type and the results for 2020 as my change. Now, if I go into the formatting options, and if you remember from the series configuration, we essentially have three types of series, positive, negative, and totals. For each and every one of those, you can additionally customize the labels specifically for them. So what I'm going to do here is, let's say for the negative changes, I'm actually going to customize the labels. The settings within them are going to be exactly the same. So you're going to know that the ones that I'm showing right now can, is also applicable for the rest of them. So first things first, you have your positioning options. You can customize this on the X and Y axis. So for example, for this one, let's say I actually want to go and be inside the center. Now, something to note about the chart is that the labels also scale dynamically. So for example, if you look right here, 4.45 thousand is a lot smaller than the one label that you see right here. The reason this is happening is because the chart itself or the column itself doesn't have enough room for the label to be fully displayed. So just take this into consideration when you're working with labels. Test it out on multiple screens and just different chart sizes. All right, enough about that. Next one is going to be the rotation angle. If you want to, you can rotate the angle of the label. Not really necessary in a lot of these cases, but for those some that are going to be specific, this is going to be a real lifesaver. For us, I'm going to go back to zero. As for the label border radius, this allows you to round up the corners of that background. So in my case, I'm going to say 21. And you can see it rounds up these corners. Now, as far as the lip label padding goes, I'm not going to change it. This is completely fine for my use case. Font colors, since I'm going to be using blue color later on, I'm actually going to be transitioning these ones to a white. So I'm going to be using white font colors there. Now, going downwards, you can adjust the font sizes, font families, styles, and get the one at result. And right here, you can see I mentioned that I can customize the background. So for the background, I'm actually going to be choosing, let's say, the same dark blue. So instead of actually pointing out or highlighting that particular value, I'm going to be sort of like hiding it. So here, I'm going to adjust also the transparency of it. So to make it more closer to the original color. And for the background outline, I'm actually going to place this opacity to a zero because I don't want to have that outline there. The one thing that you can do here or play around with a little bit is, for example, for the total columns, you can see that the label is placed on top of a column. Now, if we open up those changes right there, so let's say total values, scroll down a bit more, find the background line width. And what it allows you to do is actually increase the indent from the column to the top. So it just gives you a little bit more breathing space. Now, going back to the negative changes. So let's scroll to the bottom here, negative changes. We went through the line width. Um, additionally, you can also enable background shadows. You can have a color there, and you can also enable even shadow placement. What this means is you can start to choose where exactly these shadows are going to be going towards. If it's going to be the left-hand side or the right-hand side, or if you want them to be dropped from the top or from the bottom. If you don't need them, simply disable shadow placements and forget about them. Now, the two settings that we have left here are going to be display units and value decimals. Display units is what allows you to create the shortening for the value. So for example, right now, you can see that it's all in thousands for the negative values. If I wanted to customize this, I could force them to be with the full indent. So there's no shortening for that particular value anymore. As far as the value decimals go, these just allow you to define how many decimals are you going to be using for that series. And what's good about this is you don't have to change anything for the original column. So for the values in 2020, all you have to do is just force and say, for example, I want to have two decimal values there. So you can customize this on per visual basis. All right, that's going to be it for the value label customization. And I'll see you in the next video.